Did I marry a creepy? Royal AI. I thought I married a kind, sane husband. After 20 years and starting a family, I found out he's a creep. Before we start, gift the like button a cat, but don't mention it's feral. <laughs> Warning, the following story will be uncomfortable to creepy cheaters. I'm going to use pseudonyms for anyone I reference in this post. I'm a stay-at-home mom, 42 years old. My husband, 48, whom we'll call Paul, works in finance. We have been married for nearly 20 years. We have two kids whom we'll call Eric, our 18-year-old son, currently a senior in high school, and Shelly, our 15-year-old daughter. They are both the lights of my life. My marriage with my husband has grown somewhat stale over the years for a myriad of reasons, such as his work schedule, and how I've aged poorly since we first met. Our son, Eric, has a 18-year-old girlfriend whom he's been dating since they were freshmen in high school. We'll call her Amy. Eric absolutely adores Amy. She's his first love, and she's someone I've always considered as family. This makes the whole situation emotionally excruciating for me. Last week, I inadvertently saw my husband's phone screen and got a glimpse of a text thread between my husband and Amy, our son's girlfriend, and I read what looked like a message of her telling him that she misses sucking his I froze in place, in complete disbelief. I spent most of the day convincing myself that I must have misread what I saw. However, I didn't misread it because over the last several days, I discovered a file on his computer filled with tons of BDSM material. He clearly has an addiction watching that. He also has saved photos of Amy from her Instagram on his computer. Although they weren't inappropriate, she was fully clothed, it was still the proof I needed to confirm that I wasn't going crazy. I also looked at his phone during opportune moments and saw more of their interactions. I wish I had never looked. I've always had hunches or paranoid feelings that Paul has been cheating on me, but never in a million years could I have fathomed something like this. Last month, I found a thong in our bedroom that I know wasn't mine. I turned a blind eye to it, being naive and acting like it was maybe our daughter's, even though that made zero sense. Not only is he cheating on me, but he's betraying our son. I'm completely devastated. I don't even think words can adequately describe the dread, anger, shock I feel right now. I'm totally overwhelmed on how to handle this because obviously, action needs to be taken, but I'm terrified of what kind of psychic blow this will be for my son. I have no idea how to even broach this completely messed up topic with him. I wouldn't wish this predicament on my worst enemy. I can't even believe I married this scumbag in the first place. And then my mind started to race, realizing that I started noticing specifically unusual behavior from him. Around the same time Amy turned 18, was he waiting for her to turn 18 before pursuing this affair? There's so many layers to all of this, and I'm completely paralyzed with fear and dread about it all. None of it makes any freaking sense. How did this happen? Am I that much of a stupid, naive fool that I let all of this happen under my watch? Eric adores Amy, and the thought of revealing this sickening truth to him terrifies me. The impact on his young heart and mind could be devastating. My heart aches for Eric and Shelley, who are completely innocent bystanders. I haven't confronted my husband about this, because frankly, I'm scared of the domino effect. I don't know who to turn to first about this. I share my story not for sympathy, but in search of understanding and perhaps advice from those who might have had to grapple with betrayal this deep. Thank you for listening. To not have my initial post be long-winded, because I didn't think I needed to get into the minutiae of this, 
I didn't bother going into certain details. So here goes. How I inadvertently saw it was this. He was on his phone. He did not have iMessage open currently on the screen, but the application was still open. You know how on the iPhone, when you swipe up, and it shows all of the applications that are open and you can close them. Well, when he was closing out the applications, something he does compulsively. I noticed it. It's not like he was some kind of buffoon having iMessage open for all to see. I saw he forgot he had the application running when he swiped up from a completely different app. Also, I did say in my post that I went back to his phone to actually solidify my suspicion on a different day. So you are incorrect in asserting that I'm now magically changing my story. I am being consistent. Keep him away from your son. This would annihilate me if my dad did this. That is an insane betrayal on all of you. My God, you can't make this up. I feel so bad for you and your kids. There's no excuse in this world to get this weak, low-value man out of this. Take screenshots of everything. Hire an attorney. Get your business in order. Send the pics of the messages to her parents. Then you file for divorce and tell your son. Get counseling for you and the children. I hope you go to war with this. Your husband is a horrible person. Take everything you can from him, and I hope that his children never regain contact with him. Think of this about your son. Not only did he deceive his mother, he betrayed his son. What a piece of shit of a man. Please update us on how this is going. I hope that man gets what he deserves. Your husband is a piece of work, the lowest of the low. Unfortunately, you'll have to tell your kids one way or another as you file for divorce. Your sick husband might have been purposely grooming her. If she's freshly 18, isn't this illegal? There's no way they weren't doing anything before she turned 18. Also, even if so, the age gap is over three decades. Your husband is sus. I would contact the authorities immediately. She's been 18 for five months now. I haven't been able to pinpoint when their affair started. I'm trying my hardest to figure that out. It seems like he deletes his texts every couple of weeks, so I haven't been able to find when this whole thing started. Also, thanks everyone for your overwhelming support. I'm sorry if I haven't responded to your private messages, I'll get to it when I can. Dealing with a lot right now and taking a lot of steps that need to be taken. I'm trying to be smart and strategic with this truly surreal and terrible situation I'm in. I want to be clear that not telling my son about this was never something I was considering. I didn't mean to make it seem that way. I was just saying I'm intensely dreading it, but obviously it needs to be addressed. It's one part of the many steps of my overall plan. I'm currently playing dumb and collecting as much evidence as I can, so I can be prepared for anything and everything. I'm going to protect myself, and I'm going to make sure I don't put myself in any potential harm's way. I'll post a more thorough update soon when I can, but please know you've all touched my heart so much and made me feel less alone. I'm using pseudonyms for confidentiality. I shared a situation a few days ago on another subreddit involving my husband, Paul, and our children, Eric and Shelley, aged 18 and 15. I discovered that Paul was having an affair with our son's 18-year-old girlfriend, Amy. My son has been dating her since they were freshmen in high school. My brother connected me to a very tough junkyard dog type lawyer I saved screenshots of all his conversations with Amy. I was only able to get the last three months from iCloud. The conversations were mostly flirty and dirty talk. It was hard to stomach, completely sleazy, and I saw several negative things said about me. His call history showed he talks with her for hours, pretty consistently. He uses dating apps. I took screenshots of his multiple profiles and all of the active chats he has with his matches. 
It's very clear he uses a filter to seek out girls who are 18 to 22 years. I copied all of his files from the computer. He goes on dirty chat rooms and forums, and he spends a ton of money on OnlyFans. I rummaged through every possible hiding spot I could think of in the house. I found things I never saw before. He had various toys, blindfolds, cuffs, lubricants, etc. He also had different outfits, which looked kind of like a girl's Catholic school uniform and a French maid type outfit too. I picked up Eric and Shelly from school and we all drove to my brothers. They were able to sense something was wrong when I picked them up. I delicately told them the entire situation were in and I broke down, crying. Shelly had the most anger, even more than Eric. I met with Amy's mother and told her everything. She confiscated Amy's phone and provided me with the entire chat log. It only dated back three months ago, like on my husband's cloud, almost as if they both deleted the messages at the same time. Amy's mom would confront her daughter and would call me directly afterwards. When she did, she told me that Amy sobbed when confronted. Amy basically told her mother that she could never explain it and that she and him are in love. I don't want to get into too many details with what else she was saying, but suffice to say, it's very easy to assume that my husband slowly and methodically became a sage-like figure in her life, making her feel she could rely on him, and he took advantage of the fact that she came from a broken home. Amy is also non-stop insistent that their friendship only became romantic and physical recently, and before that, he was more of a friend and mentor. I confronted Paul over Zoom, the look on his face was scary. He became red and looked so sweaty. He had anger and panic in his eyes. His tone of voice was very defensive and frightening. He kept yelling the word context over and over again and that, none of that, happened. He was unable to speak without constant stutters and intensity. Nothing really made any sense to me. I refused to tell him where I was, and he said I had no right to take his kids away from him, and then he abruptly left the Zoom. Hmm, coward. My lawyer is filing for temporary sole custody of Shelly and a restraining order. Shelly is still the most angry. She's totally furious with her dad and Amy. Justifiably so, of course. Shelly is recollecting moments and times she watched her dad interact with her friends, and she's in knots about it. Eric is very clearly hurting, but he's so strong and very level-headed. He wants to see a therapist. The maturity my kids are showing makes me proud. They don't deserve this at all. We made the authorities aware of everything. I plan on being completely unforgiving and ruthless in this divorce. I'm reflecting on how I've been treated and how it's made me a shell of myself. Also, how I've had a very negative opinion of myself because of him over the last 20 years. I don't want to let this filth get away with it. I want to reinvent myself and move on stronger than ever. Remember that the only context that matters is that he is a 48-year-old man who has groomed a young woman into thinking they are in love. If you found proof that he's been seeking out younger women, that's grooming. This is the type that only waits until they're 18 because it's a legal problem otherwise. If it was legal, he wouldn't care. Protect your children at all costs. It sounds like you have done all the correct things. I know it seems impossibly hard right now, but keep in mind that it sounds like he's been deceiving you for a very long time. You and your kids don't deserve this at all. How is your son holding up? What has developed between him and Amy? He hasn't spoken to Amy yet since finding out the news, and I'm not sure if he ever will again. Have you confirmed if the thong you found was Amy's? The situation is messed up. I confirmed that it wasn't my daughter's. She said it wasn't hers, and I know it wasn't mine. So who else's could it be? Wait, are you saying that they also used the master bedroom? I know cheaters don't always use their married bed. But I'm curious. 
Yes, I believe he did. Both me and my son are going to get tested and checked out as well. There's no telling how many different women he's been sleeping around with. As for Amy, her mom has been in contact with me, and Amy has been threatening to run away with him because they are in love. Brought to you by Royal A. Thank you again for all the love and encouragement. It gives me comfort and means so much to me. I've received many comments and messages accusing me of faking this story, which oddly also provides comfort because all of this feels unreal, even to me. It validates my own feelings that there are people out there who can't even fathom this being true. I wish it were fake. I've been focusing on and worrying about how others are feeling over this, somewhat ignoring my own feelings, which I'm trying to change. I repeatedly range from anger to numbness, like a light switch. We're all safe and still at my brother's house. We're very careful, and his house is secured. Paul has tried to call my cell phone several times a day. I am refusing to interact with him, and I will have my lawyer handle all correspondence. He scares me, frankly. My brother's home also has a very secure alarm system and deadbolt locks. On top of that, we feel safe with him. Both my son and I got checked out and tested. It appears so far that we're both clean based on the immediate rapid tests. But in the coming days, we'll know for certain when the lab results come in. I'm not overly concerned. Eric is scheduled to see a therapist early next week, which is very good and needed. He's not himself right now. I thought he was handling it better than his sister, but I caught him in the so-called thousand-yard stare. A couple of times, he seems a bit shell-shocked, and I am worried. He internalizes a lot, and it's hard to get a read on what's going on in his head. That being said, he's thoughtful and has been talking with me, asking me how I'm doing and everything. He's not interested in talking to his dad at all. He calls only my cell phone, and he hasn't tried to reach out to either Eric or Shelly. I get the sense that Paul is extremely nervous. He's scared. And I think he knows deep down that if investigated thoroughly, he would be in big trouble. That's what my gut is telling me. I still think about the Zoom call with him, and the more I think about it, the more it looked like he was a man whose entire world was crashing down on him. The panic in his face was very apparent. I offered Shelley to make an appointment with a therapist as well, but she doesn't want to see one yet. She said she's open to it eventually, but wants time to herself. She's been asking her friends about her dad and if they experienced any creepiness from him. Her friends were open and honest with her, and apparently they felt like he stared a lot and sensed his hovering presence whenever they were over. One of Shelley's friends went so far as to say that she felt like he was checking her out a lot like looking at her rear and complimenting the color of her yoga pants. At the time, no issue was brought up about it, but in light of everything that has been happening, it seems strange now. He would sit himself in different areas or vantage points to get a good view of her, she claimed. He also asked questions about what kind of friend group or which clique they were in at school. He kept asking about if they were popular girls, I'm completely embarrassed that they had this experience at our house. As for updates on Amy, which is the main reason why I wanted to write this update, I completely agree that she is also a victim. A lot of people have been emphasizing that, and I agree. I've done everything I could in my own power to indirectly get her opportunities to get help. Like I said, I told her mother, and she's been updating me on everything. Amy, unfortunately, is still living in her deluded reality, and I can only pray that she'll eventually come to her senses. She doesn't want to see any doctors or therapists at all, and has been constantly trying to reach Paul because, again, she believes that they are in love. From what I've been told, she hasn't been able to get hold of him, and he's been avoiding communication with her completely. Amy blames me for that, 
and believes I took away his devices and am very controlling. Any truth that her mother tries to convey to her is met with conspiracy theories and hostility. Amy looks at me as a villain and still sees Paul through rose-colored glasses. Her mother showed her screenshots of his dating app profiles and matches, and she refuses to believe it, saying I photoshopped it. According to her mom, Amy keeps saying things like, everyone is just mad because she found herself a real man, and that I'm jealous because she takes better care of him than I do. It's in line with some of the conversations I took screenshots of, where a lot of what Paul says is him complaining about things I don't do for him intimately. Right now, she's insistent that she and Paul will be together in the long run. Ugh, he's honestly a creepy slime ball. I can only hope that Amy comes to her senses, but me directly intervening doesn't feel like it would be productive at the moment. Maybe eventually, though. I'm so sorry that this happened to you. Reading all the previous posts, I honestly get the vibe that your husband wasn't a very good one to begin with. Someday, when you're ready, you're going to find someone who thinks you're glorious as you age. Your son is also going to be doing great. He's gotten a lesson on exactly how men shouldn't behave. A painful one. But in time, he's going to realize that Amy was groomed and didn't know better. It sounds like she was vulnerable, and your ex took advantage of her while she was in a bad situation. Hopefully, once Amy has had some time to process just how messed up this was, she'll tell the authorities the whole story. I fully believe something was happening before she turned 18. I believe stuff happened before she was 18 too. Do you think they kept that relationship secret for most of Eric and Amy's relationship? What a disgusting father and pig, if that is the truth. I'm not sure when things got actually physical or romantic, but I do think his grooming started as soon as she came into the picture, when Eric started dating her freshman year. This mentor and a friend that Amy alluded to had to start right away. The way she's acting now, being so indebted and believing every single thing he says, shows that his effect on her had to be over a long period of time. She only turned 18, like five months ago. Her behavior and infatuation for him seems so strong that it couldn't possibly be only five months of them being together. If they are consenting adults, then there is nothing to report. This is a personal problem that needs to be dealt with by attorneys and the people involved. People are way too jumpy to snap to the police to fix their problems nowadays. OP is handling this the correct way. If any legal issues come into play, then her attorney will do the right thing. The only thing we can really hang our hat on is the possibility of Amy having an epiphany of the reality of her situation. And she opens up candidly about when it began. But because she's 18 currently and has no interest in saying or doing anything that could potentially put Paul in legal trouble, nothing really can be done. Unless they find out about other girls that I have no idea about yet. You're already stronger than you think you are. I hope he is utterly destroyed. I remember your first post and how scared you were for your son's well-being. He sounds plenty strong and him asking for therapy from the start is fantastic. I hope Shelley gets better very soon. There are no words for betrayal of this magnitude. I hope she doesn't have to see her dad again if she doesn't want to. It's heartbreaking when a parent acts so evil that their own child has to decide to go no contact, especially when they're a minor. I have a niece and nephew who had to cut contact with one of their parents. We were expecting crap to hit the fan, but the kids are thriving. I hope your kids are able to get to that stage too, where a weight lifts off their shoulders because they don't have the other parent being a burden. You're doing amazingly. In the short four days, you've contacted everyone you need to and have the kids safe. Royal AI. The support, again, has been overwhelming. And I'm very grateful. 
Sadly, I've received a lot of negative, accusatory, and even harassing private messages from people here who think I'm faking this story. Someone made a comment on some post somewhere, claiming that my story has been debunked and people believed that person. I've seen an uptick in negative messages accusing me of making this up for money. I'm not asking for money at all. Coming here was completely rooted in emotional desperation, and I didn't expect anyone to get invested in my story this way. But again, I'm not looking for anything out of this. I have. No reason to lie. I'm not gaining anything from this. If you don't believe me, that's fine. I don't care. But the only thing I ask is to not cross the line and start sending me private messages that are mean-spirited or accusatory. The only reason I'm continuing to post is because of those of you who've sent me love here. And the support really lifted my spirits. As for the divorce, it's very much underway. I'm not going to get into the specifics of it all because it's ongoing, and I want to make sure everything is going to go smoothly. I got temporary custody of Shelley. Paul also has to pay temporary child support. There's a protective order. Paul can't contact us or come near us. Right now, we're just focusing on getting through this legal mess. Again, not getting into specifics because I don't want to mess anything up. But what I'll say is, I'm very confident, divorce aside, that there's overwhelming evidence against Paul that will get him in serious trouble and it will impact him for the rest of his life. I'm sure eventually I can share more about that. I know a lot of people are concerned about his predatory ways, and I just wanted to convey the following to you, even though I have to be vague right now. Trust me, it's coming. Justice will come, and he can't do anything to stop it. <laughs> All of your concerns about how my kids are doing psychologically means a lot to me. Eric has been to therapy twice over the last two weeks. I know some people thought I was dismissive of him and acting like he's doing fine. I very much know that he's hurting internally, and we're doing everything we can to make sure he knows he is supported and loved. My brother has been amazing in spending time with Eric and Shelley, and both of them have confided in him about a lot. My brother has a very healthy marriage, and both he and his wife have really stepped up to the plate for all of us. Shelley has not seen a therapist yet, but she promises that she will be open to seeing one soon. Her anger has mostly turned into sadness. I noticed, and I hope I can get her to see a therapist even sooner than she plans to. Her close friends have played a key role in this whole thing, and that's something that Shelley has been grappling with as well. I know a lot of people are invested in the well-being of Amy as well. There were a lot of questions about whether Eric and Amy would still see each other at school. It sounded like they go to the same school, but they do not. Eric and Amy went to the same junior high school and knew each other even then. But Amy ended up going to an all-girls Catholic high school, while Eric, and Shelley too, stayed in the public school system. We all lived in the same town, and over the summer, heading into freshman year is when they were getting to know each other and when they started dating. I wish I had a better Amy update, but it's gotten a lot worse since the last update. Paul has actually been seeing Amy, despite her mother trying to force her not to see him. She tells me that Amy says she's 18 and an adult, and she can do what she wants. Her mother is in a precarious spot, because if she kicks Amy out of the house for defying her, something that she has threatened to do, which I think is a mistake, she would just run to Paul permanently. The time she spends with Paul has increased over the last week, despite the fact that Paul initially ghosted her when all of this first hit the fan. During those days, Amy would just be gone for hours on end. There's only so much I could do with the Amy situation, but again, I do believe things will turn around soon with that, given what I know about Paul. And what's to come? I can only pray that Amy can get help and guidance when more crap hits the fan. I'm doing everything I can with my own kids and my own mental health. 
Amy's mom knows she has my support, and that's all I could really provide. To be honest, the only way that Amy will see how messed up Paul is, is when he eventually sleeps with someone else, or he accuses her of seducing him. Even if he ends up on the offender list, I don't think that's enough to convince her that he's a creep and dangerous. Now I'm curious to what Paul's intentions truly are. He ghosted her, and now all of a sudden, they're meeting up again. Worst case scenario, he's gonna have her falsely testify, which I don't think will take much convincing Amy. Honestly, you and Amy's mom did what you could. The best thing Amy's mom could do now is sit and wait, but don't kick her out. Let her know she'll be there for Amy and she'll still have a roof over her head. And pray, she snaps out of it soon instead of years later, when she has burned bridges and wasted her life on a man who took advantage and ruined everyone else's lives. Take care of yourself and please don't stress about these internet trolls. They are mean, heartless, soulless humans that have nothing better to do in life than tear people down that are already hurting. Though I'm also a stranger, your story moved me and I'm so sad that you have to go through this. Please take care of yourself too. Sounds like both kids are doing fine now. But you need to be well too. Paul is a disgusting piece of crap. Betrayed his wife. Betrayed his son. And has been grooming his son's girlfriend. He has ruined three lives with his depraved selfishness. I so badly want him to be prosecuted but I don't have high hopes for that. Sadly, this is going to be far from over. The ramifications of all this will likely go for years to come. Definitely. Amy will feel the repercussions for years, but at least she will eventually be able to separate herself from it and put it in her past. But for him, he'll be Shelley and Eric's father forever though. Eric has been betrayed the worst way possible and Shelley almost to the same extent. That poor girl will probably have parents of her friends and friends, exposing stories about her father for years to come. She'll be second-guessing every interaction she's ever had with him, and she's only 15. That poor girl. How devastating to find out you married a predator. My heart breaks for their kids too. I'm glad OP is doing everything she can to nail that disgusting piece of crap to the wall. I'm leaning towards this being real due to a few things. There's been no swift resolution. Three weeks to get a protective order sounds reasonable to me. There's been no surprise arrest of Paul. Amy is acting like a grooming victim would. Other than that, I'm very confident, divorce aside, that there's overwhelming evidence against Paul. That will get him in serious trouble, and it will impact him for the rest of his life. Sounds like Paul might have got caught with having material on his phone or computer. And all I'll say about Amy is that those around her need to leave the door open for her. OP, I was married to a serial cheater too for over 20 years. Granted, he wasn't chasing after teenage girls, but still. None of this is your fault at all so don't carry that weight on your shoulders. Low-value men like your soon-to-be ex work very hard to keep their private life private and hone their skills of deception to a fine point. The only thing that surprised me was he didn't have a burner phone for his cheating. Having that fierce junkyard dog attorney will be your ticket to a new life. Seriously, if there was ever a time to go scorched earth against someone, this is it. Do everything your attorney tells you, never deviate from their advice or recommendations, and wait for the train wreck that's headed towards your soon-to-be ex at a hundred miles an hour. Make sure you lead the narrative. Tell his family as well as yours what happened, so he doesn't have a chance to sway them to his side in all of this, which narcissists and predators do on a daily basis. He will certainly make himself out to be the innocent party in all of this, while convincing them you are the crazy controlling wife, see Davo tactics. Your soon-to-be ex will certainly begin gathering together his battalion of flying monkeys to harass you and treat you like dirt, including friends and family, both yours and his. Within 24 hours of my filing for divorce, 
My ex had contacted dozens of people I knew and loved to turn them against me. Some did, some didn't. Be careful with the kids, because he'll do his best to turn them against you too. No amount of love and therapy will help that, so be on guard. He will try to contact them repeatedly, because they are a tool for him to use to hurt you. For your soon-to-be ex, your confronting, leaving and filing for divorce against him is a clear declaration of war. He will now assume the battle stance and won't care who he hurts in the process because it's all about winning. Good luck with all of this. Make sure you start seeing a trauma therapist of your own to help you shake off the decades of manipulation you've been forced to endure, all in the name of love and marriage. Believe me when I tell you it's got long-reaching tentacles and it's difficult to shake, even with the best therapist in the world. Please keep us updated, so we know you came out of this better than before. When I read your first post, I was literally shaking with anger. Reddit has never made me feel that way. I am so glad to read this update. You and your kids are so brave and strong, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. That man is a monster, and I'm glad you all are safe. That brings us to the conclusion of this story. The last update so far is added to this episode, but we can't say how it will end for OP and her family. Future updates will be added in the comment section down below. When you think some stories can't be worse, Think of this one, or what would you do if it were you in the exact same situation? What would you advise OP? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to smack the like button, and if you have a story you're willing to share, email it to contactroyalai at gmail.com. See you in the next one.